So this video is in a bit different format than I normally do, but it's cause, and that's because I don't have the best equipment. But this is an unflawed proof of the collapse conjecture. Um, and it's pretty short, pretty elementary. So first, define a function 3x plus 2 to the n, where 2 to the n is the largest power of 2 to the n dividing x. So if x is odd, then that would be 2 to the power of 0, because that's the largest power of 2 dividing x. So we're going to consider an odd number. And since the Collax conjecture automatically injects 3 into the prime factorization, I'm going to use 3 in the prime factorization when I consider the numbers. So um, the first number we're going to consider is 3, 5, 7, all to the 1. That's the prime factorization of the number 105. If I want to make that number proceed to its consecutive co-prime state by adding 1, it goes to 106. The prime factorization of that is 2 to the 1 times 53. Now, take that same number and imagine I double it and add 2 to the 1 as part of its prime factorization. Well, in order to get it to evolve to the same consecutive prime factorization, to the same consecutive co-prime what would I have to do if I added 1 to this? What would I have to do to a number that I just doubled in size? Well, I'd have to add 2, right? So 210 plus 2, because that's the largest power of 2 dividing 210, brings it to 212. The prime factorization for 212 is 2 to the 2 times 53, which makes sense. The reason it makes sense is because we started with a number, 105. The second number we went to was twice that size. So our consecutive co-prime should be one that is twice the size of the one that was done using the number 1. So the largest prime power, 2 to the end that divides x, necessarily precedes the odd portion of the prime factorization forward as if you divided 2 out of the function and then added 1. So, well, we can define a second rule then, where if it's even, divide it out of the function so that if it's odd, we only have to add 1. That is the Collatz conjecture. But somebody discovered it this way first. And the reason this works is because all your having steps are carried in your power of 2. So if you would have done 11 having steps, this function halts at a pure power of 2 to the 11. All the having steps are recorded here, and I have examples to show. So we're going to start with 23. We're going to do the original form. So 23, 3 times 23 is 69, plus 1 is 70. That is a prime factorization of 2 times 5 times 7. It's even, so we're going to have it. That takes it down to 35 for a prime factorization of 5 to the 1 times 7 to the 1. So 3 times 35 plus 1 is 106. We already have that over here. Um, to get 2 to the 1 times 53, this is an even number, so we're going to have it one more time for two having steps to go to 53, which is a prime number. So 3 times 53 plus 1 is 160, which is prime factorization 2 to the 5 times 5. So it's even. We're going to have it again. We've got to have to have it 5 times because it's 2 to the 5. So we divide it by the largest power of 2 that divides it for 5 more having steps to get down to 5, obviously. Then 3 times 5 plus 1 gets you to 16, which is 2 to the 4. 2 to the 4 is your halt point. So that's, uh, you know, um, 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 1 is 10, plus 1 is 11. 11 having steps. In my four version, we only add the largest prime power of 2. So 3 times 23 plus 2 to the 0 instead of 1 equals 70, which is 2, 1, 5 to the 1, times 7 to the 1. Same thing we have here. Now, I don't have it. I just do 3 times 70 plus the largest prime power that divides 70. That gets me to 212 for 2 to the 2 times 53. 
the same five to five times seven to 53 that we have here. Three times 12 plus the largest prime power that divides 12, four is 640, which is two to the seven times five. Now we just move to five like we were supposed to. Three times 640 plus two to the seven is 2048. That's my two, two to the 11 for my 11 halving steps for my two to the four here where I halt. They are preserving the form and function. This is a sieve. The, these branches produce um, more integers per stopping time x plus one for stopping time x. So it has this exponential growth rate. This flips the tree upside down so that the branches close together and it has an infinite decay rate instead. And since the consecutive co-prime of the number that is always injected into the prime factorization, number three, is four, once you get to the non-trivial cycle, it actually, in this version, it manifests itself as an infinite progression upward in powers of two. Even the non-trivial, or even the trivial cycle collapses because it's a sieve. Yeah, only one number fits its one path. The Colatz conjecture is necessarily true. For all my number file viewers out there, Veritasium viewers, Vsauce viewers, anybody, this is definitely worth a like and a subscribe.